Hello, good morning. It's uh, or should I say good afternoon now. It's Adil Fazal, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a mid afternoon or mid morning update on the uh, European indices for Tuesday, the 16th of August 2016. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, the uh, signals and market updates from leading providers, www.tradesignal.com. You can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, in terms of uh, market um, reaction thus far, in terms of fundamentals, let's try and just explain them to you. You are the Asian markets down overnight, the Nikkei down quite substantially, minus 1.6%. I did explain in yesterday's video of the Nikkei that the Nikkei was certainly into horizontal resistance and therefore indicating risk off. Okay, uh, Obviously, this QE trade certainly has distorted the market at present, but don't focus on QE, folks, and don't keep presuming the markets will continue to rise back on the back of light volume and QE. Uh, there's a limit to everything, okay? And when, once that limit is exceeded, the market is concerned to fall quite sharply, especially when they're so distorted and away from reality. Okay, so Nikkei at present is down more than 1.6%, the Hang Seng and the Shanghai. Shanghai rose yesterday or due to the uh, potential connect, okay? Uh, and uh, again, that certainly is uh, selling off today. Okay, so Shanghai and Nikkei certainly down, indicating risk aversion. Okay, uh, in terms of economic data this morning, let's just uh, go through that with you. Uh, the important data. So first of all, we had um, the RBA meeting out overnight. Really, it's uh, neutral, if anything. Okay, although it has been interpreted as being potentially um, uh, hawkish, and hence the reason why the Aussie certainly is screaming higher. Uh, although I am currently short from the 7735 zone, okay. Uh, now, stop losses at 0.7766, so looking for a move lower, also short the Kiwi as well. Now, we have um, retail price index, so basically the summation is that UK inflation data came in stronger than expected, and therefore that reduces the uh, <clears throat> need or the justification for further QE or rate cuts, because obviously once inflation is embedded, it's very hard to justify any further rate cuts or QE. It's more towards fiscal measures from there on in. In terms of the German ZEW, certainly coming in stronger on both fronts. Okay, Europe is Eurozone trade balance as well, coming in potentially uh, stronger uh, overall, net net. And we have the ZEW out of the Eurozone certainly coming in on the stronger side, hence the reason why we had this pop. Now, we're waiting for US housing data, although prior to that, the US dollar certainly has been butchered this morning. Okay, whether that's due to rate expectations, you have the USD JPY trading sub 100 okay that certainly isn't a good sign and indicating risk aversion us dollar as you can see here constant crush constant crush lower on the 60 minute chart as well down to the 125 level so again indicating risk off and indicating risk aversion okay so certainly looking for the dollar index at present as you can see here so certainly looking for dollar index here to uh, well certainly is flushing at present but we are looking for potential support shortly okay so again given the um, the actual flush that we've seen thus far, looking for a potential rebound on the dollar index, folks. As there's no real plausible reason for a potential sell-off in the dollar other than the fact that uh, we have this uh, potential expectations of a pause. But even then, I mean, it's it's been quite an impressive sell-off on the dollar index today. Uh, well, again, we are looking towards U.S. data. U.S. data will dictate the next potential move. Uh, U.S. data out. Uh, in today you have housing stats can see cpi so again us inflation data red book sales industrial production capacity utilization we also have the gdt price index which is the uh, obviously dairy auction mr lockhart is speaking and we have the uh, oil uh, inventory data as well so again it's going to be interesting to see how this uh, market reacts to the uh, economic data in the us but well, certainly looking for an uptick Certainly looking for an uptick. Uh, and again, the dollar is certainly all over the place. Ever since we had strong NFP, the dollar certainly has lost its gains and it's losing even more. So it certainly is um, confusing at present, uh, given the fact that um, the equity markets or Euro European equities are selling off and you're certainly not seeing that risk aversion trade for flowing into the dollar index. OK, um, certainly seems like individuals have their mindset that the Fed is never going to raise rates. And that's obviously hurting Mr. Karodi's uh, potential uh, QE project. Now let's look at the technical picture now, folks. Okay, so the German DAX, uh, you can certainly see here flushed quite powerfully today. The daily chart I did explain yesterday, you're looking at a topping tail. So again, the markets confirmed that. The uh, German DAX did attempt its uh, move back higher. So we've certainly broken out of this bullish channel now. Okay, so that's your diagonal trend line. You have gap fill above, which obviously was closed, and the market sold off ever since. So you are looking for weakness. Now, if you take the pivot high from here, connected to the next pivot high, 
and you have this diagonal trend line. So all eyes on that diagonal trend line in the German DAX. Terminate chart, we are now obviously flushing. Uh, you've obviously held that potential support here. So certainly has been very obedient from a technical perspective. Okay, so very hard to criticize the German DAX based on technicals. HNS formation certainly has played out very well, which I explained yesterday would. Okay, so uh, the uh, previous horror was obviously support equals resistance in the German DAX, gap fill resistance. And you can see the German DAX certainly flushing here as we speak. So looking for further weakness on the German DAX. Okay, so again, if we go back down to 10640, we'll, see, we'll have to reassess from there. In terms of the French CAC, let's look at the French CAC now. Okay, French CAC, I did explain yesterday, you are looking at weakness, and that's exactly what's happened today. Uh, certainly you retested the previous uh, well, gap fill resistance, okay, and obviously sold off quite substantially. So again, looking for weakness, use your diagonal trend line, take it to the next bit behind. high, and you can see that the diagonal trend line hasn't been respected totally, but for now we just use gap fill uh, resistance as the uh, key level, okay. Uh, again, potentially looking to retest below, back into that 4460 zone, okay, looking to retest there. In terms of the FTSE 100 now, folks, let's bring up the daily chart for you. Okay, so looking to potentially uh, putting in a bearish engulfing candle on the FTSE daily chart. And get on the back of, remember, the uh, we stronger inflation for data basically means no more rate cuts, folks, and nor does it mean any, any further QE. So the FTSE is certainly jeopardized now. Uh, in terms of uh, potentially moving higher. Not only is it jeopardized, you also have the USDJPY sub 100. Again, that's a risk aversion trade. You have the U Aussie and the Kiwi now into resistance again, indicating risk aversion, looking for dollar support. Okay, so fair certainly is looking to lo looking likely to rise. If you look at the actual v FTSE VIX as well, if we have this here, There you go, FTSE volatility index certainly has made a base and now looking to potentially move higher, go to a 60 minute chart. You can see that we're trying to potentially break higher here on the FTSE 100 on the volat volatility index. Going back to the FTSE 100 now. Okay, so again, bearish engulfing candle on your daily chart. 60 minute chart clearly has this HNS formation, folks. Your pivot high being, let's just put this in for you now. Okay, so HNS. Uh, your pivot high is in, uh, 6953 minus the neckline, which is around 6903. So you're looking at 6853. Uh, so you're looking at a 50 point drop, basically. Okay, so 6853 on the downside. So again, look out for that, folks. So 6853, okay. Okay, so 6853 on the downside and going back down to uh, 6860 on the downside. Okay, folks, so that's what we're looking for. Okay, so 6870, 6850 on the downside. That's what we're basically looking for in terms of the uh, FTSE 100. Okay, folks. Now, the 10 minute chart of the FTSE 100. Let's have a look here. Again, looking for a mini HS within a HS. So, again, this is your left shoulder. Head obviously has been put in. Now, looking for this right shoulder to flush. Looking for the support of 6895 to be tested. Uh, once that support obviously gives way, then you are looking at the next potential S3 support, which is seen at 6870 uh, and potentially lower. So, again, 6850 on the 60 minute chart really does come into play, and that's the one that we're focusing on. For now, let's see if we can test the 6895 zone, okay? That will be the potential first zone of the FTSE 100 to test on the downside, given the bearish news flow at present, okay? I'm going to take the pivot high from here, connect it to the next pivot high. So if we do even push higher here, you are looking at a cap at 6925, 6930. But certainly looking for further weakness, given the stronger inflation data, okay? Right, uh, I think that's a uh, wrap of the FTSE. Let's look at the uh, Europe Euro stocks now and... Um, Certainly call it a morning. I look forward to the end of day analysis. So I did two uh, videos a day. One obviously midday, one obviously end of day, trying to give you a good insight into European indices. Okay, so the daily chart of the euro stocks. I explained yesterday. You have a topping tail indicating a resistance, looking for weakness the following day. And that's exactly what's occurred. Sixty-minute chart of the euro stocks. You're looking at weakness here, given the fact that uh, 
We've obviously uh, now in this potential uh, uh, concept of lower lows and lower highs. You have a diagonal trend line now, okay? Uh, and certainly looking for weakness, okay, folks? So look for weakness, look for a, a move lower. Uh, 10 minute chart at the moment, you are looking to potentially retest that 3015 zone, potentially. Again, uh, I'm focusing on the FTSE and the NASDAQ at the moment, looking for weakness there. And obviously looking for weakness in the Aussie and Kiwi. So again, looking for weakness on the Euro stocks. Certainly looking, especially given the fact that we're back up to the uh, the 1.1, we're at the 1.13 level. Sorry, okay. So again, not 1.12, 1.13 level. So therefore, looking for weakness on the European indices. Okay, right. Uh, I think that's a wrap. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the 25% bonus. Goodbye.